Okay, it's the Board of Selectmen's meeting, today being November 8th, 2017. We would stand and pledge our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, tonight's agenda, we will be meeting at uh, approximately, well, at 7.15 with the Finance Committee. We will be discussing the town meeting warrant as well as um, some implications relative to the potential of, a t of the tax rate. Not the assessment, the rate. We need to be specific on that. Um, we will also be looking at tonight at reviewing applications to Technology Committee. We'll also be reviewing applications and for appointment to the Fire EMS Advisory Committee. We'll be looking to execute the purchase and sale agreement for 3 Milford Street. We'll be discussing a uh, trust that was left to the town of Upton by, the, um, by Harvey Trask and, uh, in his will and his trust that was established. And we'll be looking, uh, we have down here a request for the annual town report to discuss that. And then we will uh, have discussion with town manager authorization to enter into execute DPW contracts. We will not be going into executive session, so when we conclude this meeting, we will stay open. We will recess so the board is posted for the meeting with the Finance Committee, and at the conclusion of that, we will adjourn. So that is our process. So tonight we have meeting minutes to address for October 17th, the 25th, and executive session of October 17th. Could I have a motion, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we accept the regular session minutes as written for October 17th and 25th and the executive session for October 17th. Second the motion. And that's unanimous action by the board. Okay, uh, first on our agenda here is uh, the manager's report, so I'll turn it over to you, Derek. Uh, I'd say there's not much to report this evening. Uh, we spent the vast majority of our time preparing for town meeting. Uh, but as we all know, uh, Vin Roy's last day will be next Friday, November 17th, as the town DPW director. Uh, so tomorrow morning, we've assembled a team of individuals to uh, interview the, the uh, incumbent. Um, that, that team will be myself, uh, Sandy uh, Rich Gazorian from the Recreation Commission, um, Nate Fisher from the Personnel Board, and, um, and lastly, we have uh, consulted with a DPW technical expert to help us think through all the, the uh, technical questions we need, to, uh, we need to think about as we appoint the next DPW director. That's it. Okay, uh, I think on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank Vin Roy for his contributions to Town of Upton. Vin had an offer, as they say, that you can't refuse. Um, he uh, had deliberation with the town manager and some members of the board, and after deliberating for a couple of weeks, he took the option to leave for another position. Um, so he will be missed, uh, but we want to be sure to thank him for all his contributions. Okay, next on our agenda is the technology committee. We have a number of applications. If my numbers are correct, we have seven applications. John Boupiet, Nate Fisher, Ken Glowacki, Masha Kozolowski, Steve Rackerton, Don Spargo, and Don Taylor. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, I will open up for debate on the candidates. Gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, no debate, I'm just going to motion to appoint them all. Uh, yeah. That's an odd number. I, I will say I'm very impressed with the background of these individuals. They, all, they are all in the technology field and they all have strong backgrounds in this. So uh, I would assume that based upon this form of committee that the output will be very good. So I will accept motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion we appoint Donald Taylor, John Boothier, Nate Fisher, Ken Gowacki, Marsha Kozalski, Steve Rackerton, and Donald Spago? Spango? Spark. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, to the Technology Committee for a term expiring in May 2018. I second the motion. And that's unanimous action. Thank you very much to the committee. Uh, town manager will help you organize your first meeting. Call the meeting to order and you will obviously be voting a chair and organizing for that process. Okay. Our, uh, excuse yes. me, are any of the members here that apply? Do we know if anybody? Steve Rackard. Steve. Okay. Yeah. Um, next on our agenda, we have for the Fire EMS Advisory Committee, just a little background. This was a committee that's established by town bylaw, and it reads there shall be a member of the Fire and ES Department Advisory Committee consisting of five members, one full-time firefighter EMT, one call member, one EMS member, 
one citizen at large, and the chief, all appointed by and will serve at the pleasure of the Board of Selectmen. That's taken from town bylaw. It's my understanding at this time, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, as I go through these, the full-time firefighter EMT, we have a person already in that position. Uh, we have one call member. We have a person that's Anthony Savasi in that. We have an EMS member open. We have a citizen at large open, and of course the chief is on there. Am I correct, gentlemen? Yes. I yes. Agree. Yes. Okay. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So really, tonight's action, we will be looking to fill the one EMS member. We did not have any applications coming in for an open from the citizen at large. And of course, that is still open should someone want to fill that. Scott Rackerton was the member, and he has elected not to continue. Scott Rackerton, sorry. Van Ralton. Van Ralton. OK, close enough. So uh, we do have one. We have four applicants that qualify for appointment to this. They are Doug Cook, Ed, Ber Ed Bergman, Zach Ward, and Jim Hill. And correct, we all have copies of the applications in front of us? Yep. OK, I would open this up for debate before we nominate for appointment. Gary. Uh, do you want us to disband the fire and EMS study committee that we appointed to study this committee first? Excuse me? I'm uh, a couple months ago we made a committee to study whether this committee, what, where this committee was going to go. Should we disband this committee to begin with? What we're doing now is we're filling the needs of the committee by the bylaw and then how we proceed after that. We also have a, um, the board has a, um, a RFQ out or RFPs out for strategic planning and it would be part of the intent that this committee would be looking at that strategic plan to make recommendations for the um, the award to be given to which firm so they would have process on that as well so we have the members here tonight um, we would if you are in agreement if they are in agreement we'd ask them if they'd like to take two or three minutes just to give an overview and as to their interests and why they want to be on are we in agreement yes sir Yes. Okay, in no special order, I will bring them up. Uh, the first one is Jim Hill. Would you like to come up, Jim? And if you could just give us a brief overview as to your rationale as to why you'd like to serve in this capacity. Well, Mr. Chairman, I was under the impression that when the uh, board got dissolved at two selectmen's meetings ago, that that was the advisory board, as well as a lot of citizens in town felt that that was the same thing there too, so there must be some misunderstanding on that. Uh, I don't feel I'm the best person for the EMS advisory position. There's another candidate in the room that is better, better qualified at that. So if the other positions that Mr. Savasi or Mr. Kemp or the citizen or whatever, that, that's something I'd be interested in. I, I thought that's what I was applying for. Okay, uh, to clarify, and I understand where you're coming from, um, the reason is unless a member resigns and they were appointed, they stay in that position until some further action. So we, uh, we did not dissolve that committee, we did not remove membership from that. We looked to reinstate it, and we did discuss the potential of having a review on that committee to make recommendations, probably from the committee themselves and full members of the department, to reorganize that committee in a structure that may be more compatible with what the needs are. Okay. So um, we will be doing that. That's what Gary mentioned when he brought it up earlier, um, to reorganize this. But right now, we're just filling the committee the committee to its capacity to um, maintain the requirements. Like the I said, I just, I was asked to throw my name in under the impression that the committee, the, the fire EMS advisory board was dissolved, so. Okay. I, I will withdraw from being okay. on the EMS side. Of it. All right, but thank you. I appreciate your input. Okay, um, next, Zach Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, basically, um, I was also under the impression that we're going with a new committee and that the call fire spot would be open. Although it's not, that's absolutely fine. And uh, I as well feel that there's somebody in the room that's better suited for the EMS position. Okay. Just keep it short and simple. Okay. Well, and again, to be very specific, it is the intent of this board to reorganize and restructure this bylaw. So it's, yes. it's more compatible with the needs, correct? Sure. But okay. no, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Doug Cook. Uh, Douglas Cook, 43 Main Street. 
Um, I would like to sit on the uh, committee because I have a passion for EMS. I, uh, it's what I do every day, almost every day. Um, I do healthcare, and uh, um, I would like to help revitalize this uh, committee and move it forward. And uh, I would love to try and help bring advanced life support to, to all the residents of Upton 24 hours, seven days a week. And that's my passion. It's been my passion for. Okay. Any questions? Uh, uh, so, if it's, with it being just Doug, I don't have any questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for the folks at home and maybe some folks in attendance, uh, Doug has a very, very thorough and very knowledgeable background with medical. So, I think he'd be an excellent candidate. I think it kind of jumps off the page what you have here. So, it's. I think it'd be a welcome addition. Okay. No other further comments. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Short and sweet. Right. Uh, is Mr. Bergman here? Stuck in Cambridge traffic. He's stuck in Cambridge traffic, so he's. Well, uh, Mr. Ed Bergman does have an application in, so um, unfortunately he cannot make it. So I would now turn it over to the board. I would open from the board nominations for the appointment to the EMS position on the fire EMS advisory. Gary, do you have any motion or a nomination? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we appoint Doug Cook to the fire and EMS advisory committee. Second that motion. That's a second. Okay. Um, I'll make it unanimous for the board. So, Mr. Cook, you are appointed to a term to expire of May 2018. And at that, that time, it will be, um, if the bylaws are not changed, the board at that time will reappoint the new membership as required by the bylaw. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. So, next on our agenda. Uh, we have a purchase and sale agreement for 3 Milford Street. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'd like to report that um, there was a meeting with myself and Kelly McElrath and um, John, help me out John's last name? Calianos. Calianos. John Calianos from Finance Committee, um, who actually, you know, took the lead on renegotiations with the Maloney family. Um, they uh, were able to come down on the purchase price of 3 Milford Street from 235 to 187. Uh, we worked with council to draft a purchase and sale agreement that's in front of you today uh, for a purchase price of $187,000. That um, will change the motion at town meeting uh, from 235 to 187. Gentlemen, any comments? Uh, no, sir. We're all briefed on that, and we will be discussing with the Finance Committee later this evening relative to this and the financial structure of that, which to basically say it will be less than the 187 in total expenditure to the town based upon the purchase, based upon the way we're going to structure it. So, um, okay, if that be the case, a motion to approve. Gary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for the Board of Selectmen to execute a purchase and sales for 3 Milford Street. Second motion. And that's your name, but the board will sign this at the conclusion of or during our recess. So um, next we have uh, the town has uh, many of you people probably know Javi Trask. He passed away roughly six months ago. Javi was an attorney and a lifelong resident of the town. His mother was a school teacher and the family has a long heritage of history within the town. We have received the um, Javi's trust, and within the trust, and I won't get too specific, but he has bequeathed to the town of Upton land totaling somewhere in the vicinity of 28 acres to be used for recreational purposes. People that know where that land is, it's off of Menden Street. It's uh, extremely attractive piece of property. It probably has two feet of topsoil on it. It's been farmed for the last 200 years. And he has left that to the town with some stipulation that it be named the Hobby Julian Trask Fund. The Board of Selectmen will need to take action on this as a potentially the town meeting. That's to be determined by the actions of next Tuesday's town meeting. So, um, but we, uh, we are very grateful that Harvey thought of the town in, in his will and has left this to us. Do you have anything to add to this uh, beyond? No, other than the council has recommended that uh, we sponsored two articles in the springtime meeting, one to accept the land, and then one to accept the trust fund as well, which we're still working on. Yes, there is, there is also additions in this trust that once the trust is settled, anything that is left or balance is under the authority of the Board of Selectmen, the Town of Upton, to use as they deem fit for certain purposes. 
So again, it's not to get too specific at this time. It has to go through the legal process and probate. But um, very nice of Harvey, and you know he loved the town, so he certainly showed it. So okay, um, next the annual town report. Uh, one of my colleagues asked to have this put on to discuss the town report. Uh, yes, I think it, oh. it's been a ongoing uh, ongoing topic. I know during the campaign trail we all talked about this as far as uh, information that may or may not be in our town report. So I've actually gathered some other town reports, town of Milford, town of Menden, uh, also uh, town of Hopkinton. And you know, important things that people like to see would be balance sheets, especially with revolving, regarding revolving funds. Uh, this was actually brought up at the sp spring uh, town meeting, uh, whereby we're no longer going to disclose revolving funds at the annual. It now really needs to show up on, in our annual report. So I really like the format of how Menden does it. I think they do a very thorough job. They show all wages, um, overtime, um, and again, regarding revolving funds, they do a very good job showing revenues and expenditures. So I think that, again, we all talk about transparency as kind of a, you know, a catch word and people throw it out there. Here's another way that we can come forward and be more transparent. And I think people want the ability to pick up papers no matter what they are, whether it's uh, financial policies or whether it's your uh, annual report, want to be able to get that, open it up and do their own research. So again, I kind of like Menden's format as a good template for the way I feel we should redo ours. Okay, um, to the revolving fund, we do the first article on the warrant for next Tuesday is for that purpose. There is a warrant article that will address um, requirement for all revolving funds to be placed within the town report. So should that pass, that would take place anyway. Uh, Gary? Yeah, biggest thing, I, I agree with Steve, the biggest thing I'd like to see is the salaries. Mm -hmm. and, um, laying it out so you actually know how much each employee makes. Uh, that way you don't have to pick through multiple lines to figure out salaries. Okay, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we are posted next Thursday. Oh, we Thursday. haven't posted just yet. Yeah, but we are scheduled we will, for yes, Thursday, yeah. right, mm -hmm. to set the tax rate. Um, so I would like to make a suggestion because the town report is not the Board of Selectmen's. It is the town report for the citizens, but it, its input is from all the elected and appointed boards and commissions. I'd like to ask if we could take till that time to ask the town manager to send out a survey to the other elected boards and other departments to gain their input on what they'd like to see in that before we just jump in and start doing revision. That way we get more consensus to what it is. Um, I certainly don't have a problem with the revolving account of the salaries or any of that. It's how extensive we get. Um, I've seen Mendens and they put in pictures of road races and everything. I don't know if we want to go that far, but um, certainly the intent is there. So um, are we in agreement that yep. that would make and sense? And certainly. A week from Thursday, we, yeah, a week from Thursday or tomorrow, we will be meeting again and we can discuss it. Something, else, it I just learned agenda. Is, something, out there, something else I just learned this evening is the town reports actually do sooner than I thought. I thought we yeah. had until like May time frame. I didn't realize January we had. 10th. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So we don't have time on our side. So, but one week I don't think we'll make it or break it. So, in sure. agreement? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Um, that's pretty much what we have. Uh, any local ahead topics from the board? Uh, Gary? Can. We have to oh, excuse me, town manager, DPW contracts, correct. Yeah. Go ahead, Derek. Um, so we have two contracts in front of you today. As you know, the um, um, town bylaw requires that uh, anything above $25,000 needs approval by the Board of Selectmen before make signature. Um, the first one is with uh, CDM Smith uh, under the Master Services Agreement for dam inspections uh, at a cost of $27,700. We do them both together? You want both okay. together, yeah. Okay. And the second one is uh, with uh, Sail Coating Inc., and that's for crack sailing. Uh, the winning bid was uh, $200,000. Okay, so these bids have gone to due process. We need a motion to authorize town manager to execute these contracts on behalf of the town. Any comment? No. 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 Gary? Yep, right here. Okay, Gary. Mr. Please. Chairman, I make a motion. We authorize the town manager to execute a $200,000 contract with crack sailing Inc and a $27,700 contract with CDM Smith. Second the motion. That's unanimous and nice to inspection the dams. That's something the county used to do, but 
Now let's defer it to unfunded mandates, as they call them. So, okay, I believe that is it. Am I correct? Yes, General. sir. General? Any look ahead topics? Anything? I don't have anything no. just yet. No. Derek, anything? No. no. Sandy. Okay, will we go in recess? Anything else? Okay, the board will be in recess till. I think we have somebody? Yeah. Yes. It clearly states that it requires town meeting vote. So nothing can transpire until the town meeting votes in the affirmative okay. for, for the, yeah. The so purchase. Really okay. Yeah. Just, all, all it does is it, it protects the town from the seller going out and selling it to someone else until we've had town the time to go through the process of the town meeting. So, so it's contingent upon. It's contingent upon the town meeting. So okay. should, <laughs> should the seller come in tomorrow and say, I've got another buyer? No, we have the purchase and sale, we're protected, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the board will be in recess till 7.15. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>